I'll talk loud because the river is behind me, but um, I just finished with my friend Evan uh, doing what I consider the hardest hike that I've done in my 35 years. We did, we are in Jasper National Park right now, and we're at a place called the Medicine Tent Campground, which is a primitive campground. The way to get here is to drive to uh, the town of Hinton in Alberta and then go south on Highway 40 to Cadman and go past Cadman over the Cardinal Divide and down a dirt road and the trailhead is over there. The trailhead is about 11 kilometers away from here so it's 11 kilometers to this campsite but what we did is we did a loop so we followed the south boundary, we went to uh, uh, Cairn Pass and then from Cairn Pass, we hiked over something called Dean Pass. There's no trail there. We just bushwhacked a shortcut to take about a day off our trip. Then we headed up to South Esk Lake, which is seldom visited. Then we went to Glacier Lake, which is even rarer. Nobody goes to Glacier Lake. Then we came back down to Burnt Timber and back, followed the Rocky River to its forks with uh, the Medicine Tent and then came back here. So all told, we did a 110 kilometer loop in some of the most remote wilderness that uh, Jasper has to offer and uh, it was an amazing trip. Along the way we had uh, three days of rain. We had willows that were as tall as a man. Uh, we, I lost a number of times we crossed creeks. Uh, we weren't taking our boots off to cross creeks and rivers like this. We were crossing rivers with water up to our uh, higher than our thighs constantly. Uh, we were losing the trail every day. We had to lose the trail, and it would take us sometimes 20 minutes to refine the trail. Um, so we saw amazing things along the way. Uh, wet morning. Hot water, sir. Watch your hand. Thank you. Oh, enjoy that. Yes. Enjoy that, chef. You've done enough for me. The least I can do is boil you some water, I dude. I appreciate you, Marty. <laughs> of course, that's where we're going. But there's traces of blue up there. Typical morning at this time of year. It's wet in the morning, and then the sun will dry or will bring out the heat. 8:50, and we're rolling. Bye bye lake. We're going down. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's nothing higher up there. Nope. Good. Good. Wow. I haven't seen something like this in a long time. Dude, I stopped their golf course down there. Mm -hmm. Evan lost the uh, trigger guard for his bear spray, so... On day one. On day one, and every so often he has to stop and wrap rope around there so that the guard doesn't press down by accident. What a shithole. Burnt Timber Campground. What do you think, Evan? What do you think of Burnt Timber? Uh, I say we burn a trail out of here. Yeah, it was underwhelming to say the least. It's abandoned. It's no longer being used. We couldn't even find a sign that said Burnt Timber on it. Big avalanche slope up there. All this has been devastated. Getting ready for a Ford. Hoping we wouldn't have to today, but we do. We stopped taking off our boots because we keep having to cross this river. We've crossed it like six times now. And the problem is every time we cross it, we lose the trail on the other side. 
I'm at that point where I don't give a crap anymore. <laughs> to stay motivated at this point we are both feet soaking wet pants wet drizzling yeah Antler. Here's our little campsite. We're at the junction of the Rocky River and Restless Creek, so I'm calling this Restless Campsite. What's for dinner tonight? Shepherd's pie! Woohoo! So this is the Rocky River. We crossed this one at least 10 times today. And right there is the confluence and Restless Creek is dumping in and then it becomes rocky all the way down to Rocky Fork. Evan, you crazy mother. I haven't been on a... This will be my first time sleeping six nights in a bush since 2015. Yeah. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather do this trip with than this man. I mean, it's been an amazing, fantastic year. We've hiked some amazing places, and this is... We're not done. This is just another day. But this one was... This was a tough hike that I would not want to do alone. I'm glad I'm glad Evan came along. Thanks, man. You're well, more than well. I'm glad you were here. Sure, I was saying earlier, there was a point today where I would not have been able to get through it if it wasn't for you. There's no way I was doing that so well. Two people can do that to each other. It helps. Yeah. Because alone you might stop and add a day. I actually, I won't lie. I thought maybe we should add a day. <laughs> there was a point today where I was like, uh, we stop here at, uh, the wife, tell her to get, uh, in reach the wife to get her to get a hold of work. This might just be the most amazing meal I've had in the most amazing scenery. Like, that's oh, beautiful. I, wow. We put our tents back there. We should have put our tents here. No doubt. Oh my god. <laughs> Not wow. Oh my god. Shepherd's pie is considered by many just it's a comfort food, right? It's 100%. a comfort food. Well, we're on day six. This is day six of our trip. I wanted something comforting at the end of today. We have one more meal tomorrow. It's going to be over the top extravagant, but we want to. Evan, I am covered here. in goosebumps right now. I am <laughs> absolutely Good. underneath. I am covered in goosebumps. Awesome. It's warm in my hands. The filling is warm. The potatoes are warm. Dude, we conquered this beast. We have <laughs> one, one more day. One more day. If we got through today, Jasper is like the largest national park. There's 1,600 kilometers of trails in this park. Yeah. I have a map at home where I've drawn with a highlighter all the trails I've done in this park, which is almost all of them. People have been bugging me because I've never been to South Esk. I only know one other person who's been to South Esk, Maddie. I've been to South Esk! Yes! Woo! Not just that, we went past South Esk. Glacier was Glacier. Cool. Yeah. We beat Willows. We beat this river today. Rocky River is... I don't, I don't know what the cubic inches of flow on this thing is, but man, it tried to take us down this today. This river tried to take us down today and it did not succeed. Nope. I'm not going to insult you and put ketchup on here. You're not going to do no, it? No, no. <laughs> there I, it is, right from his mouth. He's not going to put ketchup I on it. I eat this at home. At home, this was a comfort food. My mom made this. Just very simple. She put the hamburger on the bottom cream corn out of cream a can corn. on top yep. and Mashed the potatoes, potatoes. and then uh, if she was fancy she'd sprinkle a little bit of paprika on, on top so when we got it by, from mom we would pour a bunch of ketchup on it yes i'm not going to do that to you evan this is, this does not need ketchup i'm still rolling i mean i 
I had a hard time on the. I had a hard time imagining today. I, I thought yeah. I was wet. I was cold. The morning was miserable. I was wet and cold. And then I had a hard time imagining the routine once we got into camp. I was scared that that I'd be in here and we'd be just cold and we'd just want to miserable and miserable and have a shitty spot and. All we managed to do is put up the tent and um, hide in our tent. Hide in our tent, yeah. and instead, instead, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, these are like tears of joy. Need to keep some for tomorrow night or last night. Lime flavored crystal light. Marty's famous backcountry mule. Tea and bourbon. Nice tea and bourbon. Well, that's not that weird. Nope. Doesn't run melt, are they? What's happening? Oh. Oh, that's nothing. I thought there was more. Oh, this one. There you go. A friend of ours named Jeff got us these socks before the trip. Bridgedale. And they're supposedly waterproof and I wouldn't have thought it, but yesterday uh, we went through a lot of water and when I got to camp and I took off those socks, the uh, sports socks I had underneath were dry. Today they were soaking wet, but today I was crossing rivers that are uh, knee deep at least so the water was just coming into the boot and into the sock so if I'd pulled the socks a little bit higher I might have stayed drier but uh, tomorrow all we need to do is just get them damp like squeeze wring the water out of them and get them damp and then you walk around they're kind of like a neoprene sock and uh, they're game changers as far as I'm concerned All right, actually, look at my tent. It's kind of a mess tonight. Got socks and boots and wet socks and stuff everywhere. It's the last night. No, second to last night. Uh, night six, so uh, I haven't done a six nights since 2015, so... Uh, long trip. We're at about 90 kilometers. We're on the home stretch now. Tomorrow we go to back to where we started, back to Medicine Tent. Today almost took it out of us. Uh, we were both feeling uh, we were running out of juice. I had this spot marked as a potential campsite on um, my GPS, and then that drove us eventually. You know, as I had to remind myself that I picked this spot looking at a topographic map I, I had no knowledge of this area so we're driving towards this spot and it turned out that it was a fantastic spot so the idea of picking a campsite at the junction of uh, two rivers was a really good idea um, long day uh, this trail threw everything at us you know creek crossings today like uh, 15 creek crossings willows as tall as a man climbing down downhills, uh, fallen timber all over the place, um, but in the end, got here, set up camp, dried out things, got some dry clothes, Evan made an absolutely amazing meal with the uh, shepherd's pie, sat around the fire a little bit, chit chat, and uh, now tomorrow we have an easy day, 11 kilometers, so wake up early get a good start on the day but we won't be stressed and pushing ourselves we can go explore there's a cabin that we want to go look at so anyways night six is in the bag we'll see you folks in the morning Cheers. doesn't that look like a face got the hair the eyebrows the nose and a mustache underneath the nose cool
We should have done this last night. is if you look further ahead you see it here you see it well you sort of see it down there it tells us we have to be on the other side of this creek Fourth time we're crossing this stupid river. Fourth or fifth this morning. Lovely. In total, I'd say about 15. Whoa! This is not shallow. Sorry. Deepest spot yet. Wow, the water's going that way. The main channel, but then we got water running back. Where is it going to run? A marker. <laughs> the other side's got trees. More ground to work with. I don't know what that means. Rocky Forks Horse uh, Campground. Where? We did it, man. That's South Esk that way. There's not even an arrow or a sign telling you that that goes to South Esk. Oh, there is. Burn timber. 15k to burn timber. And we're heading to the south boundary 1k away. Holy shit, man. Dude, we did it. No, Woo! We're close. That's amazing. Amazing. Let's go dry off at this cabin. Let's do it. Let's do it. Rocky Forks. Canada Trail 2016. Where's the water? Rocky Forks patrol cabin. Jeez, last time we saw a patrol cabin was about 60 kilometers ago. There are no patrol cabins on the South Esk Loop. Check out the view from the porch of this cabin. Two problems with wet gear. One is it's wet and when you get into the camp you're not dry. <laughs> and two, it weighs a ton. We started out with 35 pound packs. We consumed uh, six days of food, so that's 12 pounds each, but now I'm carrying 12 pounds of water, so I'm not happy. So I want everything bone dry before I continue. No, that's a blister. I'll research it when I get home, but these cabins, a lot of them were built in the 1950s. Um, but apparently this cabin, just reading some log entries, was built on the site of an old cabin. There was an old cabin here that belonged to a trapper. And uh, apparently, I think the trapper was like an original name, like Ed McDonald or something like that. And he lived here for 24 years, year round. That's tough. Sitting on the porch of this beautiful cabin. I'm gonna make a crab dinner. 
got some roasted almonds and a pouch of uh, electrolytes. In the fancy restaurant. <laughs> You're a molten cake, sir. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Wow. We were going to have these last night for dinner, or after dinner, but too long of a day. Two ways to get to the south boundary. So try and make sense of this horse campground, hiker campground. This is just how far to medicine tent or to uh, doesn't give any distances. Junction Rocky Pass Trail, eight kilometers from trail, has been completely washed out. This section of the trail is tedious and boring. Not well, not tedious in a physical sense, just. In a mental sense, all it is is a track through the wilderness, through the forest, and there's not much to see. There's the river over there. Wow, the trail has been washed out in the last decade. We go right or we go left? Now this time I'm positive we go left, but that sign's telling me nothing. Yeah, there's an arrow. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's Rocky Pass. Right where the trees end. Holy shit, man. We did the loop. The loop <laughs> is complete. The loop is done. This is the sign. Oh man. Our campsite from night one. Today is night seven. Our bag is still hanging. Nobody's here. I know we still have a day to go, but we're back to where we started. We did the loop, man. Full loop. Full loop. Full loop complete. Crazy loop. Wait till you folks, if you get the opportunity, get out a map on National Geographic, on Google Earth. I'll put it on Cal Topo and look at what we did. The adventure was amazing. Wow. Amazing. This is a shot I don't film very often. You're looking at a man right now who's content. We just did something really hard. It was seven days of hiking. I've been wearing these pants for seven days. I've changed, sorry to be crude, but I've changed underwear twice. I've worn the same shirt underneath here during the day when I hike. I have a clean shirt, but I have a dirty shirt. My hands, I've got a cut thumb. I got a scar here, I got bites everywhere, I got scratches on my legs, my watch is dead. My hands are filthy dirty, I haven't shaved or showered or washed properly in seven days. But I am content. What was going through your mind most of the time? On the trip? Yeah. I was trying to, honestly I was trying to live in the moment. Because there's times when it would get hard. And, and I was like, okay, this will be over soon. We'll be at camp. We'll be comfortable again. And then I was like, if you have that mentality, we're going to be at home and we're going to be back at work again. And this trip will be gone. So I kept trying to tell myself to live in the moment, look around, notice that mountain, notice this hill, appreciate it for what it's it is. It's easier to live in the moments when we're stopped. It is. You yeah. know, when we stop for a break at a waterfall or when we're at a campsite or a cabin or... Uh, 
at night, it's easy to, yeah, you're right. I mean, living in the moment during the day, there's, mo I mean, there's moments I don't even, there's moments where we're on cruise control. Today. Like walking through willows, and you're not looking ahead when you're walking through willows. You're sort of looking through the willows, trying to see where the trail is, and so you don't I, get tripped up. And so you don't get tripped up, and I catch myself just following the trail and going like, "Holy shit, man!" Like, and, and then you wonder, is the trail even there? And the trail's still there. Yeah, you, it's like it's kind of like when you're driving to work and you black out, and you're at work and you're like, "Did I go through a red light?" And then the other thing that's weird for me. I've, I've talked about this on other videos is there's moments on the trail where there's noise in my head where um, it's either songs playing and and noise from the river and I'm it's noisy I, I, I can only describe it as noisy and then there's other moments on the trail where it's actually peaceful and uh, this hike had mostly peaceful moments although I'll say one weird thing I had a different song playing in my head every day <laughs> And they would play in my head all day. Today was Pink Floyd. Um, on day one, it was annoying because it was um, Last of the Mohican on the violin was playing in my head all day. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You know your weird wind. Uh, yeah, it was kind of... Wh what was the most challenging part for you on this trip? Bean Pass, once we got over Bean Pass, when we got to the top of Bean Pass, and then the trail disappeared, and there was no trail coming down on the other side, that was, that was, that was pure, pure bushwhacking. Yeah. That was challenging. Hard on the shins, hard on the feet, hard, hard on, on the, the body, knees. trying yeah. to pick a path and, and not, uh, not end up getting, uh, clipped out or creeped out. And then uh, day five, the morning of, when we left um, South Est, I was soaking wet. That mm -hmm. was my hardest. That, that was the most challenging day for me. And there was no scenery. We followed the no. lake. The, the, we, we got into that, like, rainforest area that was kind of cool. Yeah, the follow, everywhere following the lake was yeah. okay. And then once we did that cut across to leave the lake, and then we got that ugly lake on the side and the willows the willows and yeah. there, was, there was nothing pretty about that segment no that was hard that was that was a and it was wet and cold the sun hadn't come out yet and we didn't know the trail it took this huge loop and we were hoping it was going the right direction we were standing in our wall being like how do we get up how do we get up there and then all of a sudden it turned in a different direction on the video i talked about we're going over there and then Ten minutes later, I realized, no, we're not. We're going over there. Yeah, so we were looking due west. We ended up going due north. It was that following was the creek up to the head wall of uh, Glacier Pass was impressive. And then climbing that head wall and starting to see the pass. Oh, yeah. The waterfalls coming off, that was beautiful. I mean, it, it was one of the most challenging days I've ever had hiking. And also the most rewarding day. The waterfalls were amazing. That that uh, avalanche destruction area that we oh. walked through was uh, like mind-boggling when you when you think back to it. Folks, and I have a sorry. No. I I have a blister this big, like bigger. It's like a dollar coin, bigger than a loony on this foot. I've never had blisters. Coming from the guy who always says he never gets. I blisters. never get blisters. I it's not a blister. I have no skin on my heel. None. Skeletor clothes. And then this morning, we put on boots this morning. We <laughs> they were so cold. I was trying to, I tried, I put on two socks and then I put on my boot and my foot was so tight in there and my feet were so cold I had to take off one sock and then we walked. And then immediately after crossing the creek, we lost the trail. I was like, oh. uh, I think <laughs> and this we, week. we left, we put our water shoes on across the creek this morning put our shoes on, spent some time warming up our feet, which didn't really work. We had ice cubes for toes. Only to find in 500 meters we were going through the river again. Yeah. Yesterday, it going... It was in 20 minutes. Yesterday was an interesting mindset for me. Going through the rivers yesterday, I didn't give a shit. Didn't no. give a shit. Didn't give a shit. I, I did at the beginning. The first one I took my shoes off for, and then after that, you kind of realize that we're 
basically walking through this river all day. I don't know how many times we crossed it. I lost count. And then to me, every day is broken up in three. The morning was one thing. Yeah. The mornings usually, actually, the mornings went by quickly. Then we took a, bri a long break. The mornings were like warm your warm your legs up, kind of get your pace going and go. Stop for some water and then hit lunch. Time. Yeah. And then after every lunch, when I knew that after every lunch we always had 10, 11 k's still to go, so I, I dreaded the afternoons. And then, but the afternoons went by quickly. There was always obstacles in there. Yeah. Yeah. There was the ob afternoon of obstacle courses, always. Even today, I mean, we, we we purposely did a short morning, got to the cabin, wanted to see the cabin, had a great lunch, dessert, everything at the cabin, and then after that, it's like, okay, we only have seven and a half days. <laughs> so, we get to a junction, and we decide to take the, <coughs> the left branch, which took us backwards. Literally backwards. About a kilometer and a half. Yeah. And then... I was having doubts at that point. I was having real doubts. I'm like, are we on the south boundary? Are we, what the hell trail are we on right now? And then I found that sign. Yeah. And we turned around and we fixed it. But, yeah, that was always. Then we had to cross the river a bunch of times. I, that trail's going to get flooded out here. All I can say to Parks Canada is, please, 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 you know, dedicate one crew. It, it, it costs you nothing to say, hell, I'll come and volunteer to do it with the crew and uh, maybe Evan and others, but would love to organize a, a, a volunteer effort and we will come and clear this trail. If you do not clear this trail in, in the next year or two, it will become lost, so overgrown and lost. And, and I'm not talking about just clearing um, deadfall across the trail. We have to whack the willows. And then the other thing we have to do or you have to do is through some of the flat, those yellow markers are so important. There's just no signage out here, and just a little bit of signage showing us over the distance where to go, especially through the flats, would have been awesome. I mean, there's nothing out here. There's no signage. There's no. There's no fire pit. There's nothing. There's like you got to do something. You know, you're charging $137 per family for a parking pass. You. You collect twenty thousand dollars in half an hour, every half hour. Take some of that money and dedicate it to this trail, please. Please. I, I appreciate the paving of the roads and the new parking lots you're putting in Banff, but this trail is beautiful and it, it has a lot of history to it. And it would be nice if it was preserved. And you know, there was well, and if in the books, how, how many people have done this trail? I think there's about five different people do this trail. We, we read the, 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 the guidebook at the Rocky Forks had three people going through here this year and nobody going through last year uh, yeah. on the way to South S. So uh, with us, that's that's five people this summer. And that's not enough to beat that. And, and if it through. became, quote unquote, relatively easy to get to South Aston Glacier, it's a, it's a stepping stone to explore other areas. You can go to Leah and come look down at Moline. You can go to Rest, Restless Creek. There's so many areas around here yeah. that uh, that can be explored. So amazing! All right, dude. Cheers. Now let's cook. You cook. I'll eat. Yes. We left some food here uh, a week ago, and it's still here. Nobody took it. The mystery has been solved. It's still here. Can you guys guess what that's for? No, I know you can't, and it's not for a drink. Big escargot. Did you buy big ones or little ones? Uh, I don't know. Whatever they had, to be honest. Sometimes they come in different sizes.
Garlic bread, sauteed onions and peppers. Uh. It's gonna be a good night. Dude, use your hands, man. I'm joking, buddy. You'll know why I'm separating these in a minute. Isn't it just amazing? Look at this. Cheers, Mare. Cheers. Wow. Oh. This just... This just went to number one, dude. This just went, <laughs> oh my God. All right, uh, quick one. Uh, day seven is in the bag. I am beat. Okay, one last look at medicine tent. We left it perfect for everybody that comes here. Better than we showed up, dude. Better than when we found it. All right, dude, let's go do what we came here to do. All right, this is the junction that leads to Rocky Pass, so we are back on the trail that we were on on day one. We're at the fishbowl already. slippery when you're coming down these slopes they're scree and it just slips underneath you and it's very easy to lose your footing um, You look like Bigfoot coming down. Evan just reminded me, we went behind this hill, behind those mountains, behind all those mountains. I think we even went behind that glacier. And then we were all, that's, that's the almost, no, that's a restless valley behind that. So we went all the way around that and came back. There's another mountain range. Yeah, we were, we were at least uh, 15 kilometers behind that. On my GPS, the arrow is pointing to Camp 5. So Camp 5 is 17.07 .07 kilometers away as the crow flies almost directly across. So 17 kilometers that way. 17 kilometers that way is where we were on night five. So the loop we did is enormous. Enormous. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Holy shit. Well, that was the hard part for the morning. <sighs> now it's a little bit of climbing, which is graduate, which is very easy. But more importantly, this kind of climbing is easy. When you got a scenery like this, don't mind that at all. I'll take it all day. I don't mind that at all. That's the Cardinal Divide. And I think that hump over there is where all the cars are parked and where the, logo, the sign is. Last climb, last significant climb.
that's an interesting fire pit. Check this out, Evan. Back into civilization because all you hear is the bra of ATVs over the distance making a shit ton of noise and a shit ton of damage. That's the end of the trail. <laughs> One of the most anticlimactic ends of a hike of this nature because we there's all terrain vehicles and motorcycles and all sorts of things all around here, but I don't think it matters. <laughs> the end is the end is the end. Woo!